Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So behind me you can see an enclosure for my Prusa i3 Mark III, which allows it to print pretty much any material without any warping whatsoever. So in this video I'm going to show you how I built it and why. So because of its all metal hot end and otherwise really good construction, the Prusa i3 is for me, the prime candidate for printing very high temperature materials. And because while the print bed gets nice and hot to 120 degrees, uh, the build space around it should still be kind of heated for materials like ABS or polycarbonate, so that there is no splitting of layers and just general better print quality. So that's why I built this enclosure. And at the same time, I wanted to cut down on any residual noise that there was, so that the printer can be really nice and dead silent. As you can hear, it is running behind me, printing some beautiful ABS parts, and you probably can't even hear it. So let's start at the beginning. First I took some measurements and looked around the basement what I could use. All the materials for this were just from what I had laying around, I didn't purchase anything new for this project. That's why some of the stuff is a little bit janky and maybe not how you would build it if you were to go to the hardware store and buy all the materials for it. So one of the really popular ways to build an enclosure for the i3 Mark III is to use one of the IKEA tables as it basically fits perfectly and you just have to add the sides and if you're gonna go out to IKEA that's perfect but I didn't want to drive out to IKEA for that so I did a very similar construction myself. I just I mentioned it so that it is the, just the size is no bigger than it absolutely has to be. I also accounted for some styrofoam installation inside to really keep all that heat from the build plate in there. So I started off with four kind of heavy duty posts in the corners and then connected it in, on the bottom on a base plate and to the sides I'm also going to add some just regular plywood. Then to cut down on the noise, there are kind of two variants that you can do. One is you can isolate the printer from the bottom, so you can put vibration dampeners. Or the other way is to just have a really heavy base, like a concrete slab, which is just not going to be bothered by the vibrations at all. So in this case, I chose the latter. And as you can see in this footage, um, this is not a tutorial on how to make a concrete slab. This, if anything, is a tutorial how not to uh, make a concrete slab. I tried to follow the instructions on the concrete that I had laying around, but it wasn't really designed for applications like this. It's more for like putting posts in your garden, where this technique will probably work a little bit better. So this is not how you do it. And the top ended up really rough because a bunch of it didn't stick properly. So I went back in with only the fine stuff, like I filtered out the big gravel pieces and was kind of able to fix it up a bit, but it's not perfect at all. So if I'm ever going to do it again, then I will probably buy some proper concrete that is actually designed for applications like this, which is much finer and doesn't have the big pieces in it, and then mix it properly before and pour it in. That will probably yield a much better result. Then, although it is quick setting concrete, I did let it dry for a couple of days and then I used it in my machine. But I didn't paint the concrete itself uh, until it was fully dry. Now on the package it says it can take up to a month, but then again that's outside. And after I was using the chamber heated, I could like literally see how the concrete was lightening up. Thanks to the heat it dried up in just a day or two. I also made sure to open the door regularly to let the damp air out. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Then before I assembled everything and started painting, I also added insulation, which is just some styrofoam that I had laying around. And I added the door. Now, it would probably be enough to just have one nice piece of acrylic there. But since I had this left over from an old project, this is a sandwich of two pieces of acrylic with an air gap in between, which is going to seal it nicely. Like, if I touch the outside here, it's not much warm at all, while the inside is 
nice and hard. On a temperature gauge inside here, it's reading about 65 degrees, just from the heated bed. Then in the top, I just added in a slot where I can fit in the material and that allows me to have different spool holders on the top. In the back, I have a dry box for my polycarbonate and nylon filaments. And in the front, just the regular spool holders for like ABS and PLA kind of stuff. Then as soon as I was done building it, I immediately went to go test it and just kind of put a temperature probe up by the top somewhere and to kind of monitor how warm it gets. And I was printing some ABS um, I thought, wow, this is really working nicely. Print bed temperature for me at ABS is 110 degrees Celsius. So it's quite hot, but it heated up the space nicely. It went around maybe 70 degrees Celsius is what it read on the temperature probe up there. But what I didn't regard was that the temperature down by the heated bed, where also the extruder and everything is, was quite a bit higher. So, well, long story short, a bunch of stuff started warping and just the PDG parts from the Prusa build, they weren't heat resistant enough for what I was asking from them. I didn't immediately notice that, so I was chasing my tail for quite a bit. But once I noticed, I reprinted some th these parts in PDG on my Ender 3, which by the way prints PDG just beautifully and replace them all. Now I'm also reprinting them again, but this time in polycarbonate, which hopefully should be able to withstand the heat in there a bit better. I also moved my temperature probe and that's why I usually have a little gap open in the door here because it just works too well. So I need the gap to let some hot air out so that the build chamber doesn't get too hot. So that also leads me to what I will do in the future with this. This is working very, very good and it's working too well. So one thing I'm gonna do is replace all the PDG parts of the printer with polycarbonate parts that should be able to withstand around 100 degrees Celsius, no problem. And then I'm also gonna move the electronics of the printer outside at around 50, 60 degrees, it's no problem to have the electronics in there. They're designed to be able to withstand some heat. But when I'm getting closer to 100 degrees, it's much better to have them outside. I'm also going to build a regulating system, which is going to measure the temperature. And when it gets too hot, it's going to intake some cold air and mix the air inside around a bit. So that I can just set the temperature that I want inside and it's going to stay at that temperature. I was planning on that all along, but instead of adding a cooling fan, I was uh, thinking I would have to add a heater to get it up to temperature nicely, but that totally isn't necessary, as the insulation works really well. That's probably also why most people are just using single acrylic sheets for all the sides. I guess that's why they don't have to build regulating electronics and stuff. Well, for me that's gonna be in a different video, as I have ordered a parts, but they still haven't arrived from China. So far, this is a very big success. Being able to print polycarbonate very nicely is a great achievement for me. And it will allow me to get some really nice prints for mechanical applications and also applications where heat is a bit more of an issue. Now, the only issue that I still have with polycarbonate is just getting it, it to stick to the bed. I am able to get it to stick for the most part and it doesn't fly off, but there still is some warping in the corners. Although I'm using the bed at 120 degrees Celsius, I'm using a layer of glue stick and I'm using a brim around it, but this just is in the nature of polycarbonate. And once I'm able to heat up the chamber to around 90 degrees Celsius, that should improve a lot as well. So that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the second part. And you can also check out my Instagram down below. I've been a lot more active recently on there and I've posted a lot of pictures and little test parts of this build already over there. So if you want to see my progress while it's happening, go check out my social down below. There are also affiliate links down below. So if you're doing some shopping online, 
maybe you can use them. It's not gonna cost you any extra, but it's helping me out a lot. So thanks for watching and until next time.